This video tutorial will provide an example of how to designate a beam or a girder as a supporting element when transferring information from Adapt Builder to Adapt PTRC. When launching Adapt Builder, we want to go ahead and make sure that the module for PTRC strip mode is selected. This gives us additional functions that allow us to send the model from Adapt Builder to PTRC. We're now going to go ahead and just lay out a sample model. I'll use the grid snap or the snap grid here to lay this out. And we're going to go to the model ribbon. I'll first add some columns. I'll change the size of the columns. I'm actually going to use the new property grid that will be included in Builder 2020 to do this. So I'll say that this column will be a 24 uh, by 24. You'll notice one thing about this is there's no longer an option here to select a green checkbox. Once you make the, uh, the change or the input, that is the current input that will be used for that particular uh, setting or property for the component. So once we've set our size, I'll go ahead and create some, some beams here. And I'm going to take these columns and I'll just copy and paste those down. I'll next uh, set the beam size. So I'll set this as a 22, let's say, by, by 24. Okay, and we'll go ahead and just create a couple of beams there. And then I'm going to copy those beams over. And then I'm going to fill this in with joists. So I'll go back to uh, beam, and we're going to say these joists are going to be 10 by 10 by 24. Okay, we're going to add. One little curveball here, we're going to actually put a column so we can show the difference between column supported or even wall supported and um, a girder or beam supported. So I'll go ahead and I'll just drop in an additional column here and here just for example purposes. Uh, the next thing we'll do is create a slab. So I'm going to tighten up the spacing of our snap grid to two and two. And then we'll go in and just draw a slab around this series of beams and columns. And I'll turn off that snap grid. Okay, we could also create a, a beam line here, which would probably be common as well as the exterior, but we'll leave it as, as is now. So what I'm going to do is go to here to the PTRC export, and I'm going to create an X direction support line. And we'll start this support line out here at the slab edge. It's important when we're um, generating these strips for PTRC export, we need to make sure we snap on the endpoints of components. For example, I need to snap on uh, this point, this point, this column center, column center, or beam center. They coincide, and then and then the uh, and then the slab edge. Now, before we actually draw that in, we know that we want uh, this beam here this beam, I'll call this beam 1, and this beam 2, to support this joist. I'll call this J1 for span 1, J2 for span 2, and so on. So this needs to be a support. This element here supports this element, and the same thing here. In order for us to make uh, the, that work and for the program to interpret that data properly, we need to use an option uh, built here into the program. So this option that we're going to use is actually under the strip modeling panel in the PTRC ribbon, the PTRC export ribbon, and it's called strip, uh, create strip method load transfer. Notice now that it's inactive. In order to activate it, we have to have the support line in place. So I'll go here to the create X direction support line, and um, we're going to go back and put this support line in place. I'll snap to the endpoint of beam, endpoint and beginning point of the next beam segment, and so on. So this becomes our uh, first design strip. Okay, the second or, or the, the second design strip will be this one where we have basically every 
location is supported by a girder. So the difference here is we have a couple of columns here. We don't have any columns. The same type of input here would be required. And um, we'll go through and generate that. Now, because we're not going to fill in the entire slab with support lines, I'm also going to add an X direction splitter here between this open end, let's say, and, and below this support line here. Okay, and that creates uh, boundaries for the tributaries that will be generated by the program. So the next thing we want to do is we want to now invoke this option. So if I select uh, this, or even without selecting that, you'll notice that this is now active. So when I do that, notice this gives us a warning saying, no, you need to go back and, and we need to know what support line this is going to be associated with. So I'm going to add a point there, point there. These two are actually supported by the columns. And then I'll add four more supports here. But notice that those are not actually being added because I have not selected that support line. So once I'm done with that first one, I'll come back, select this. There's another warning here that will be shown. And I can now add in these supports. Okay. And the color of the support line changes, indicating that that support line, at least at one location, is supported by this um, strip method load transfer support. And if you zoom in, you can actually see the support. If I double click on it, it actually shows me the properties of that support. There's a point support there. The next thing I'll do is just generate the strips. So when I generate the strips, the program will, in essence, generate the ADB files necessary to be executed in that PTRC. And there's different ways to get there. I could go and just select a strip and execute that in PTRC. I could generate the input data. This will actually save two ADB files into this location. Another option would be, and this is the option I prefer if you're wanting to see what uh, tributaries were created or what strip was created for the support line. If you double click on the support line, select this modeling option here, this will actually show me the strip that's going to be generated. And if I use wireframe, you can see there's a point support created here and a point support created there. So now, if I go into Adapt PTRC, we can go ahead and open PTRC. And we can review here the uh, input for that strip. And if I, again, go to wireframe, you're going to see the program has added a point support at these locations here and there. So in Adapt PTRC, one thing to note is if you go through some of this input and we get over to the support location which is shown here the program will indicate you know what supports are located at what position so here we have some um, you know very tiny support here we could actually modify this and say by default this might be or by by modification this might be zero zero and in so doing this this becomes a pin support by by default when we make this modification. But the program assumes some some support there per the input made from Adapt Builder to Adapt PTRC. We'll go ahead and close out of that program instance. We'll come back to this strip. And again, here we can verify this has no columns at all that are modeled. But if we go back to that wireframe, we can see there are point supports located at each location. Now inside this dialog, we could go to the supports below or above. And this shows us, you know, that the program has created these, these supports with A and B dimension. You could also modify that here before it gets sent over to PTRC. So this is another way to uh, make that modification. Uh, within Adapt Builder versus Adapt PTRC. If you have any questions, please contact us at adaptsupport at resa.com.